draw me to the kingdom for such a time as this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stand with us if you would. As we read the word of the Lord. Thankful for the songs, the worship, testimonies. Grateful that Casey and Paige were able to go to Vancouver Island and uh, the book says one plants another waters but whether it's in Vancouver whether it's in Africa Antarctica, Asia Europe, North or South America even here it'll be God that gives the increase so we keep planting we keep watering God will give the increase. Um, it's, uh, it's good to see Titus and Kathy and Aunt Carol here. Uh, Kathy, have you ever been here since I've pastored? Is this your first time since I've pastored? I think it is. I don't think you have since I've pastored. Paige and Casey went to Canada, and it's so ironic Kathy, I'll never, I'll never forget as long as I live. We were in Toronto at General Conference in 2003 in September. And uh, I was thinking, Aunt Carol, we went up in the CN Tower. I don't know if y'all remember that or not, but Uncle Paul, they had a solid glass floor in the top of that building. It was like 10 million feet tall. And you stood out over that glass floor, Brother David, and there was nothing underneath you. And Uncle Paul thought he was cute, and he got out there and starts jumping up and down on it. I wanted to grab him and say, get back, you're about to fall. My stomach was up in my throat, and Uncle Paul was cutting up. But Kathy came to me at our booth, the Boys Ranch booth, and I don't know if you remember this, but I remember it. I can see your face. I can see what you had on. And she said, GL, I really feel like that you are going to be the next pastor at New Madrid. And it was at that moment when I first believed really happened. It was, it was at that moment. I wasn't planning to leave the boys' ranch. Uh, and if I did, I wasn't planning to come back here. I cut, my, I cut all my, I sold all my stuff, and I moved. And, and I don't know if you remember that or not, Kathy, but I remember it well. And Every time I think about it when I'm discouraged and down in the dumps and I think about the word of the Lord coming to me through you, it blesses me and still makes the hair stand up on my arms. So thank you for speaking into my life and we're, we're honored that you all are with us tonight. Luke 24, lengthy reading if you'll indulge me. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they, everybody say they, remembered his words. And returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales. One translation says, and their words seemed to them as nonsense and they believed them not. I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight. Uh, 
and it's truly going to be a few minutes after Brother Richard preached an hour. <laughs> Paige and Casey preached an hour and a half. Uh, so I don't have very much time left. <laughs> Come on, Brother Billy, let me tell this story. I want to preach to you for a few minutes. It's starting to come together. It's starting to come together. Lord, I love you tonight. I love you with all of my heart, and I'm going to worship you forever. Lord, you've already done enough for us throughout our lives to worship you till eternity, and we still wouldn't do enough. God, I pray that you will anoint us to deliver this word tonight. I pray, God, that we can paint the pictures that you've shown us. I pray, Lord, that everyone will receive it and that faith will be given birth to, will be encouraged, will be strengthened. I pray, God, that you will help us to practice what we preach when we get through, Lord. I, I pray, God, that you'll bless this church. I pray that you'll bless everyone that's here. Bless those that are unable to be here tonight. Bless those that are watching us on the Internet tonight, God. I pray that you will minister into every life that is connected to this service. And I give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you for standing. These ladies in Luke chapter 5, they saw the tomb and they saw his body. They saw as they put him in and rolled the stone, they saw that he was wrapped in linen grave clothes. But the Sabbath got in the way because Brother David, they went back and they began to prepare the spices. But you see at 6 p.m., you had to quit. You couldn't do any work because it is 6 p.m. Friday until 6 p.m. Saturday is the Sabbath. And, and they were forbidden from caring for the dead during the time of rest, the time of the Sabbath. So they prepared the spices and from 6 to 6, they did nothing. They rested. They did not go out there. They didn't make their way to the graveyard. But when the time came, they gathered all their spices and they went in to further care and anoint and 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 preserve the body of their precious Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who had healed them, delivered them. At least one of the ladies had had devils cast out of her. Possibly the other lady, Brother David, was the one that washed his feet and, and wiped them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. And, and they had had an up-close and personal connection with Jesus Christ. He had blessed their life. He had, he had uh, healed them. He had delivered them. He had protected them. He had been with them. He would comforted them. He spoke peace into their life. They loved him. They followed him. They were devoted to him and so they went to care for that precious body of, of that savior who had done everything he could for them but then that body failed him and he died and, and so they made their way to Joseph's tomb uh, to, the, to the garden tomb if you will and, and they, they made their way there and when they arrived they saw the stone was rolled away and the body wasn't there he, the tomb was empty and there beside it lay uh, just the linen cloth uh, there was two angelic beings that spoke to them two angels came and just simply reminded them the words of Jesus. Uh, he's not here. He's risen. He told you that that was going to happen. They would crucify him and nail him to a tree and on the third day he would rise again. And those ladies, uh, and those ladies, Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and a few other ladies, uh, Brother David, they remembered. Yes, he did tell us that. He did tell us that he was going to be there three days uh, and then he was going to rise from the dead uh, and he would be triumphant. He, we remember Remember, he told us that. So they hurried to the place where the disciples were gathered and shared the good news with them. They came to share their, their revelation. They came to share that the promise came to pass and he kept his word. But the Bible says the disciples weren't having any of it because Jesus was dead. All hope is lost. The disciples, having been close companions of Jesus, and each other for around three and a half years. They've not even got time to assimilate plans to go on and continue life as individuals. So they just naturally gravitated one to another. They are, of course, grieving the death of Jesus. They are grieving the fact that Jesus has died. 
They are grieving the fact that they crucified him. They hung him on a tree. Uh, he hung there suspended between heaven and earth and, and in torture and agony and pain. And no doubt you have a picture of it in your mind even now until he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. But they're also dumbfounded, bewildered, and in shock because with the death of Jesus Christ also died every promise of deliverance. Every idea of a kingdom where Jesus is the king and they will live and reign with him. You understand they've given up everything to follow Jesus. They gave up everything to follow him. They forsook their businesses. They forsook their families. Some of them forsook their livelihood. And they gave up everything to follow Jesus. And now he's dead. And now he's buried. And buried with him was every hope that we had. If you'll allow me to say it this way, they bet all on Jesus Christ. They sacrificed all for him. It's now the end. It's over. There they were. Somebody see if you've been here before. In that dark abyss of faithless self-pity where reality has hit them and they aren't even that interested in the delusional ramblings of a few silly women. Peter, being perhaps more grieved than any because he, before Jesus died, Peter lost the opportunity to put his money where his mouth was, so to speak. And he failed. He denied the Lord, not once, not twice, but three times. And in doing so, Brother Brandon, he became the fulfillment of a prophetic word because the Lord told him, before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. He lied. He lied to a young lady. And then Peter, this impetuous fisherman of Galilee, hometown Capernaum, specifically chosen by the Lord, this Peter who the Lord said upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. It was this Peter who had a cussing fit. He cursed, he swore, he lied, he betrayed, he denied. All, all with the singular purpose of separating himself from Jesus of refusing to be identified with Jesus, of fear of being identified, Brother McKinney, with Jesus Christ. Brother Billy, he's now become everything he scoffed at. Remember, he told the Lord, he said, everybody else might fail you, but I'll die with you. Everybody else might turn their back on you, but not me. I'll be there. But, but Brother Larry, when the time came, he failed. And it is with those, oh, help me now, Holy Ghost, just for a minute. It is with those thoughts and the fact that, Sister Callie, Jesus is in the grave. And Peter's failure will forever be upon his shoulders. Brother Pete, there's not an opportunity for him to go to Jesus and make it right, Brother Richard. I, I, I wanted to, to, to when, you read, when you showed that, that dark cloud, that dark storm, that's, that's how Peter's mind was, Brother Billy. It was that hanging over them. Because everything he had made fun of, everything he had ridiculed, everything he had scoffed at, he had become that, and now there's no way to make it right. It's over. But with the pitiful... Ladies, standing there, fellas, they're standing there. Noah, they're, they're standing there and saying, but he's not there. And the angel said, remember the words and remember the truth, and he's not there. And brother, brother Billy, they're making fun of them. They're, they're waving them off. They're, they're talking about they're silly. They refuse to believe them. But I can see, if you, if you can get this picture in your mind of Peter off in a corner, perhaps, uh, uh, j just let, let me tell it like I see it, uh, perhaps he's got about three or four days of growth on his face. Uh, he hasn't shaved. Uh, he hasn't taken a bath. Uh, he's still wearing the clothes that he had on. Uh, perhaps, Sister Maria, the soot from that burning barrel that he held his hands over is still under 
underneath his fingernails. It seems like, Brother David, that everything in his life is a constant reminder of what he became. And then when Jesus needed him at his most, at Jesus' worst, he failed him. Peter's sitting in the corner. He's got his head in his hands. He crosses his legs. He uncrosses his legs. He gets up and he walks around the room. He grits his teeth and he wipes the tears out of his eyes. I can I, I don't know if it's like this or not, but I, I can just see, Brother David, the tears streaking down through the dust and the dirt on his face. His hair is disheveled, disheveled and he is in mourning, not just for what he lost in Jesus, but what he lost completely. But suddenly, somehow, and I, this is right here, I'm, I'm about done. I won't be long, right here, this is about it. Somehow, in the middle of all of that, there came one beam of light. And it began to tickle. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, I know it's rough. I know it's rough and I know it's tough. And I know the enemy takes our weaknesses and magnifies them. But you got to remember that the devil's a liar and he's a liar from the beginning and he's a father of all lies. He can't tell the truth standing on a stack of Bibles like somebody said. The devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's trying to kill you. He's trying to steal from you and he wants to destroy you. Oh, how he rejoiced to see the 11 disciples that are left because you see number 12's blood still laying on the rocks at Gehenna, the valley no, at Ladama. But somewhere into the mind of Peter, as he's roaming around, as he's wallowing in a, a quagmire of self-pity and despair, and he earned it. He earned that. And... We've been there before, Brother P brother McKinney. He sat down a while, put his head in his hands. Oh, if I just had another chance to do it all. Come on, Peter, you big dummy. How stupid. How stupid. He said you were going to have the keys to the kingdom. He said heaven had already revealed things to you. But when the time came, you failed. When the time came, you threw in the towel. You were ready to give up. You wouldn't stay in. Come on, Peter. You just well go back to fishing. You just well go back to what you were doing. This, this gig with Jesus is over. It's up. He's dead. He's gone. How can it be like this? Tears just dripping down his face. And he fluctuates, uh, Bub, he fluctuates from, from feeling sorry for himself to feeling angry at himself. And then he's angry at everybody else. And he said, why couldn't they mind their own business? Why did they even have to ask me if I knew him? I was trying to follow along. Think about it, Brother David. I was trying to follow along, but they wouldn't leave me alone. They kept on asking me. They kept on badgering me. They kept on the little girl. What, what business of it was hers who I was with? She made me have to lie. She made, I didn't want to do it, but I was afraid. But Brother McKinney, somewhere knocking in the door of his mind, somewhere knocking in the door of his mind is a glimmer of hope, beating like a heartbeat. Can you see it? A beacon. Maybe it's a lighthouse on a stormy night that begins to flicker through the, the, the recesses of Peter's mind, through the darkness, through the failure, through the uh, uh, having to eat his words, through having to be ashamed of, of, of those lips that once tasted of holy food, and cursing. And he jumps up, grabs his robe around him, and he makes his way to the door. And the Bible says, that Peter ran. Verse 12, then arose Peter and ran to the sepulcher. And stooping down, I've been there, it's just a short, a short little square hole. Matter of fact, if I'd been thinking, I, I got a picture of me standing in the doorway Brother David, possibly that very doorway. And he stooped down. And if you look in, it's off to the right just a little bit. 
And all he saw was an empty slab and some linen clothing laid by itself. And the Bible says, and he departed, wondering. Everybody say wondering. Come on, say it again. Say it one more time. It is to the individual that is wondering that I come to speak tonight. It's not wondering from an aimless meandering. It's not wondering Brother Brandon, as a question, I wonder if that's the truth or not. Can you see him? His face flushed and tear stained, but the glimmer of something in his eye. It's not quite clear, but there's something there. As he stands in the morning sun, having run down a path that was once unfamiliar, but now has become familiar. You know, they could have stolen his body. But there's something about that. If, if they would have stolen his body, they would have taken the grave clothes with them. There's something about those clothes lying there because robbers would have kept them on, but they would have stayed with the dead body unless, unless he didn't need them anymore. Wondering. Everybody say wondering again. Can you let the Holy Ghost begin to speak to you right now? That word wondering comes from the Greek word thamozo. T-H-A-U-M-O-Z-O. And one definition says to regard with amazement. Now, I didn't make this up. To regard with amazement and with a suggestion of beginning to speculate on a matter. At the risk of sounding cliched, you come to the music. At the risk of sounding cliched, I want somebody, everybody, listen right now very closely. It's always the darkest just before the dawn. Can I invite you tonight to take a trip with me to an empty tomb? Can I invite you to go with Peter to an empty tomb? Brother David, there was no definitive answer there. There was only a glimmer of hope that was given birth to that perhaps that perhaps all wasn't lost that perhaps that those words weren't just hyperbole or those words weren't just heavenly words but sister Leanne maybe there's some truth to that and maybe there's hope and he began he began to wrap his mind the Bible says, at what had come to pass. And I would submit to you tonight <laughs> I feel such a kinship with Peter right now because, oh, I sat at my desk yesterday. Brother David, not even sure about preaching this. I sat at my desk yesterday and told the Lord one more time, I'm not worthy of this. Sister Leanne, I sat there going back over in my mind, reminiscing about things the Lord don't even remember. But you know what I have to do when I do that, Brother David? I got to take a trip to the tomb. And see where he lay. But he's not there anymore. And I don't have all the answers to what he's doing. I don't know everything that's happening. But I can tell you right now. It's all starting to come together. The 
girls, you didn't see much positive knocking on those doors, but I'm telling you, it's all coming together. It seems like you've been beating your head against the wall, but I'm telling you, it's all coming together. It seems like that the knuckleheads are winning, but I'm telling you that it's all coming together. And if I can tonight, by the help of the Lord, make you begin to wonder, make you begin to wonder in your mind at what has come to pass, that with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, came the power, the demonstration, the ability for whatever's going on in your life to come to pass. There's nothing definitive. It's just a glimmer of hope. Something's happening in the spirit. There's been war in the heavens and there has been war in the grave and there has been war on the cross. Don't let the blood fool you. Don't let the scars fool you. Don't let the linens lay into the side fool you because they paid a price, Brother David, that's way beyond what you need. We've got to take a visit to the tomb and realize that it began when he came up out of the grave. It wasn't death, it was resurrection. And with the resurrection of Jesus Christ was the resurrection of hope within each one of us. And you've been called to the kingdom with purpose. You've been called to the kingdom with definition. You've been called to the kingdom with power. You've been called to the kingdom with demonstration. You've been called to the kingdom with faith and the Lord has not made a mistake and you've got to realize it's all coming together please stand with me crazy ladies You're full of nonsense why you want to come in there spouting that stuff but one of the eleven named Peter it shook him enough to get up and to make his way to a tomb that was empty it's because of an empty tomb that you and I have hope. So tonight I come to minister to each and every one of us, but especially you that the devil's beat you down, that your faith has taken a beating, that you know there's a promise but life has almost made you give up on it. Can you believe, can you believe that it's all about to come together? Can you believe that very soon that first soul you're going to teach that first Bible study you're going to rejoice as they're baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost can you believe that very soon you're going to lay hands on that first sick person that as soon as you take authority over that sickness in their body they're going to be healed do you believe you're right on the brink of the word of prophecy and the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge being active in your life. The gift of faith, laying on of hands, of miracles, of becoming a witness for which God gave you the Holy Ghost for. Brother David and I talked before church along with the other fellas. I preach a lot of places. I attend service a lot more places. Nowhere has as much spirit and power and anointing as what I feel here. So all I got to do is just keep you believing. 
and it's all starting to come together. I see the men praying in the prayer room, the ladies praying in the prayer room. If you could just believe. Is there anybody in the house tonight that just for a moment you would like to say, I'll be that one? I will be that one that in the middle of my mess, in the residue of my failures, Brother Richard, with that dark cloud hanging over me, I'll step out and make my way to the tomb because I got to see it for myself. It's not just idle words. It's not just something cool. It's not just hype. It's not just trying to get people stoked. It's not just trying to get people to come here. This is not just some cool business gig we've got going here. There's a reason why I kept you fellas together for three and a half years. There's a reason why I told you again and again and again, they're going to kill me and they're going to bury me, but I'm only going to be there three days. And I'm coming out. There is a kingdom. There is a promise. Will somebody believe it in your life? Please come pray. If you feel like the Lord has spoken to you tonight.